The 25 hours at Thunder Hill is uh, the longest race in North America to date. Um, it's one of the hardest weeks in motorsports to go through. It's a grassroots uh, race, but brings a lot of pro teams, a lot of big, big drivers, big teams, big cars. Um, and it's turning into something that everybody cares about. Everybody wants that win. Everybody wants to be there and participate. So on Thursday morning, that's the first day of practice. Um, we got all the guys uh, in the car. Uh, for some testing. We were battling sound issues just like every year. It's nothing new for us. Um, you know, it makes it a little bit difficult to practice, but we worked through it, um, got the car to, to finally pass sound, um, and uh, just tried to get the guys as much seat time as possible. Uh, this is the first year we've actually had a five driver lineup. Um, we had four returning drivers plus a new one uh, that hadn't seen the track in this configuration before. So, it was important for us to get everybody some seat time um, before Friday, before the big day of qualifying. So Friday started off for us, um, just myself uh, was practicing uh, and then just getting the car ready for qualifying. We were making a couple more tweaks uh, to resolve our sound issue there, our sound limitation. Um, just so that we could actually be under for the race so we didn't have to worry about it. So um, that led us into Friday night qualifying, which is the first time anybody gets to see the track at night, which is uh, always exciting for anybody that's never done it before. Um, had a very strong qualifying, our best qualifying yet. Uh, we qualified 16th, I believe. And, uh, you know, that, that set us up in the field real nice, right where we wanted to be, up with the front runners. Um, so I couldn't have been couldn't have been happier with that. We also took the time to get uh, Sean O'Brien in the car, which he's one of our newer drivers. Uh, he he was with us last year, um, but never got a chance to drive at night. So it was his first opportunity to see uh, the track at night, and he responded very very well. You know, we just kind of left him out there to to turn some laps and get comfortable. Uh, you know, took the pressure off of him. You know, just wanted him to get some seat time so that. Uh, when night fell, we had somebody else we could rely on. So Saturday, we had the start of the race uh, at 11. Uh, all the crew was there. We went through some, some pit stop training and uh, some crew training just to make sure everybody was on the right page. Um, kind of our general drivers meeting uh, just to make sure that everybody was on our team was clear about what our vision was and our goals for the race. Um, and then, uh, went up for opening ceremonies, which was, you know, it's always an emotional time up there, you know, for, for us and our crew, this is what we work for all year. So for a timely, finally to be time for us to, uh, to get to work, um, you know, it, it, it really, uh, it really catches you. So, Got ourselves focused, uh, got in the car. Uh, I started off the race uh, for a short stint um, and, uh, and took off and everything was going great. Uh, had a first uh, good run out there, moved up a couple of spots, got comfortable with the car, showed even more pace in the car, which was nice because it was the hottest part of the day for us. From there, we got uh, Eric Dietz in the car. It was his first time that he got to see the track. Uh, under race conditions so that was kind of exciting to give him that opportunity and, and see how he performed under those conditions uh, following Eric um, we moved into Sean O'Brien uh, he got in the car for his stint uh, everything went well responded well uh, ran some some pretty quick times got real comfortable uh, we followed him up with uh, Barry Yost my father a 63 year old father by the way that uh, is out there kicking everybody's ass um he ran real well kind of uh, a farewell stint for him that was the only stint he was going to run during the race which would be his final one um and then he's retiring so that was cool to get him in there and then uh we got my partner in crime mike banani uh in the car for his session um they, which took us into the nighttime. uh he had worked us right back to where where we wanted to be before uh 
before I got in the car to really start pounding out the laps through the night. Um, for us, we're very, very strong through the nighttime, and that's what we were looking forward to the most. Um, I had gotten in the car, and about three laps into my stint, that's when uh, the car decided it didn't want to do anymore. So it, uh, it took us all by surprise. We weren't ready for that. We, uh, we pulled it in and, and took a couple of hours to dissect it and try to work on it the best we could to get us back out there. We did some other maintenance at that time. We were you know, eight hours in, so we decided we'll, uh, we'll start changing brakes and just make sure we're good to go. And unfortunately, the car never got back out on track. So it, uh, it was definitely a bummer for everybody that was involved. Nobody likes to, uh, to throw in the towel, but at some point you, you just have to do it. You don't, you don't have a choice. You know, you, you do everything you can until there's nothing left to do. And at that point, you just got to call it. So it's, uh, it's never fun at that point to make that decision. Um, I try not to make that decision. Uh, our crew chief, Mike Warfield, he tries not to make that decision, but, uh, at some point there's just nothing left that we can do. So, you know, I, I appreciate everybody's involvement, everybody's hard work and dedication and people traveling to be there. Um, you know, we've had so many great people a, a part of this program, especially this year, and it, uh, it was tough to, to let everybody down. But unfortunately, that's racing. We just don't, don't make it sometimes.